Blog Talk Radio. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Hi everyone, this is Chatting with Nat, this is Nathalie Jean, this is Nathalie Jean, and today we have the honor of having two-time Grammy Award winning artist Lucy Calantari. Lucy Calantari is a two-time Grammy Award winning artist, composer, and producer, passionate about creating children's media that brings joy, inspires community, and then highlights the power of resilience. She's the front woman and band leader for Lucy Commentary and the Jazz Cats. I have cats, so I love that. Making bilingual jazz age inspired music for families. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. Yeah, I have to get, you know, my, my two little hands are not, just gonna, are not going to do you justice. <laughs> Gotta have the applause. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Nat. It's so cool to be here. How you doing? I'm, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm living. I'm, I'm still breathing. I'm surviving. I'm surviving this, whew, the world and all the things we have to do in it, and trying to live my life the best that I can. How have you been? Oh, that's that's great. I mean, that's like that's all what we can do, right? Like, just do the best with what we got. And, like, sometimes Amen. their best will look one way, right? And, right? and another day, the best will look, so, like, totally something different. So, you know, as yeah. long as we're just doing it, keep going. Amen. I agree with that. Now, I like to start out with this little synopsis and this question. Obviously, phew, the past three years have just been cray-cray. I call it cray-cray because it's just been out of, out of this world. There are points um, in the past three years that I've had to pinch myself to see if I'm not living in the twilight zone or is, are we not in, it's not the 21st century. Are we in the 1930s, 1800s? I don't know, but we know that uh, the pandemic itself was just sad and awful. You know, people died, people have long-term effects of COVID, people lost their limbs, people also lost lives. However, there have been pros that have come out of this situation, you know, um, more family members were seen walking outside together. I know in my neighborhood, there's just more people taking time to connect <laughs> with one another. Um, I know people that cut back on work because they realized they weren't spending enough time with uh, their families. You have people that decided, there were a lot of articles about people deciding to quit their job because what it did, it made people realize what they needed in their lives to be happy. It's like, okay, I have to have a job. I need food. I need clothing. I need shelter. But I need to do something that's going to be make me happy while I'm doing it. Then you had, um, then you had climate change. Oh my gosh! While, while we were not in the world, mm-hmm. um, the trees and the animals were running rampant, free and so happy, and the pollution level went down. And I know they were just hoping that we weren't going to get back into the world, but we had to come back. Um, and then you have artists like you and I that, um, some rebranded, some created EPs, single tracks, albums. Some said, no, I'm not doing this music thing anymore. Um, so there was a lot of self introspection during this time. Um, so during this time, did you think about how you want to be perceived as an artist? Um, did that stay the same? Were there any changes that came about everything that we went through the past? The past three years between pandemic, George Floyd, the elections, Roe versus Wade, monkeypox, COVID had some babies, we had potatoes, (laughs) we had earthquakes, we had assassinations, we had tsunamis, now we have polio that is trying to make a comeback. (laughs) <laughs> Stop it. it. Really? Now there's what I haven't read yet. Oh my you God, haven't heard about so polio? Good. I haven't been reading. I have I haven't read the news in the last like few weeks. I'm like, oh, I can't. I need a time out. <laughs> That's good. That's good. But yeah, but polio has started to make a comeback in New York. That's what that's the, that's the irony in New York. Oh no! You get in the sewer systems, and then there's 
there's a new like virus in China that's like it comes from it's from animal to human that hasn't reached here, but you know, you know what I'm saying? It, we we uh, such an make, overload. Like yeah. oh my god. Yeah. So like one of the things you mentioned in that very long list of life <laughs> things that change, you know, so like I did spend like that first summer, right, in, during <laughs> the first year of COVID, I uh, did a lot of gardening. Now, I've always done gardening every year. Some days, were, some, you know, years were more prolific than others. But right. like that year, what what you said about like, you know, animals just sort of being out more in the open because yes. the the noise pollution in New York City was so low, right? Because they had canceled so many flights. These birds were right. so loud. So I remember <laughs> I go out there at like five thirty, six in the morning, right? And I'm like tending the garden, doing the thing. And these birds are like, tweet! Do you hear me tweet? Like, <laughs> I have these videos, like, I would I would try to keep track of, like, some of the things that I was gardening to, to sort of see the flow, and I had this, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, send, put a video on social media. I, I didn't really share many of those. I actually kept them for myself, and you just hear, and that's me, there's a voice of me describing, all right, well, here's my, my tomatoes, and here's the zucchini that's growing, and and then in the background, you could barely hear me because the birds are out there going, Dwayne! 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 <laughs> like, um, every time I see that video, I'm so happy I took it because I laugh so hard. <laughs> like, it's so loud and it's wonderful. You know, it's just like there was like this, this freedom. Like, it really showed how much we really have gotten in the way of nature. Isn't that something? Yes. Yes. They were like, tweet it loud. I'm tweeting it loud. I'm saying it loud. Can you hear me? I'm here. Let me live. And I love that. They, they really, like, kept me company. Now, like, I, you know, I, I went into, like, I guess, like, this, this space. You know, mm-hmm. I was just caring for this garden. Like, my son was still sleeping upstairs. And I was just like, all right, I'm going to do this thing. And, like, and I heard these birds. And everybody was just existing and surviving and living. And now there was a time where, where it was very, very dark, like emotionally. Right. It was so dark because right. in New York City, it was it was also very loud with, with ambulances. Like it was nonstop for like two weeks. So that was mm. terrible. Um, so, mm. you know, once we got past the, the like really, you know, there, there was that peak of awfulness. Right. And it's just like, all right, do you remember – what are the important things? And that, that is good. So it's like you kind of, it's like everybody kind of paused. I did feel kind of like this pause there. And it was just so nice to be reminded of that with, with all the birds and their chirping. And, um, but, you know, like, like everybody else in, who's an artist makes music, all the concerts were canceled. Right. You know, we had uh, Austin City Limits was, can, was, uh, was scheduled. We were going to perform that year. And um, and it got canceled. I'm like, no. And mm. but I'm thrilled to say that here we are. You know, that was 2020. So now here we are in 2022. That's the year we're in, right? Okay, 2022. <laughs> yeah. We're going. We're going. Like we're we're coming Yay. back. We're gonna go to Austin City Limits. And like, you know, so there's a pause, and somebody kind of went and scrambled all this stuff. But like, you know, there was. A, a moment to like, you know, mm. question the intention, question, redefine. Yeah. I was certainly really, really tired, you know, at that yeah. point. And, and so I was grateful for that, for the moment, although I, it was with a lot of anxiety because of all the, all the yeah. ambulances and things all around. Um, But, you know, I, um, I was also excited to do other things, like um, something that presented during that time was like a, a hand washing, uh, right? Because remember, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, you got a hand wash. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so wild to think how like, you know, suddenly people had to be reminded, like, here's why hand washing is important. Look, hand washing was important before the pandemic. Right. And it's still important now, right? So like, 
so there was this app um, that I participated in uh, for Alexa that allowed, uh, sorry, for all the machines that I just activated by saying her name. <laughs> wow. Um, that, like, you know, allowed people to, you know, help people wash their hands for the allotted amount of time. This is mostly directed oh. at kids, right, because, like, you know, they just kind of wet their hands. So it's like, okay, I'm done. Right. And actually, a lot of adults do that thing. So, yeah. like, it was a song long enough <laughs> to <laughs> wash hands for 20 seconds. Oh, wow. And it's called Hand Wash Jukebox. And uh, it was awesome. I got to curate a lot of music in it and oh, edit cool. down a lot of the music. And I'm the voice in it, too. So, it's like, you're listening to Hand Wash Jukebox. And, cool. like, um, I had some some of my songs on it. I had a bunch of other, like, children, fellow children's artists on there. And it was really, really cool. So, like, you know, out of out of the darkness, there's always, like, little rays of light, you know, just something that, what can we do? How can we spill some sunshine, you know, right. where, it's, where it's dark? Mm-hmm. Mm, I love that. Absolutely love that. Now, how did like, Lucy get into the music industry? Did you just come out of the womb? And it was like, okay, I'm, I'm music. That's all I know. Or is it was it something that you heard? <laughs> I mean, what was it that made you say this is it for me? I want to do music. Oh wow! Well, back <laughs> in my when I was a little tiny girl, <laughs> here's like so I was. I mean, I was singing like since I was itty bitty. Like I love to sing. Not like it didn't even matter like who, where, what, when. It wasn't professional. It was just I just wanted to sing. I wanted to make music. My dad got me this little, like, um, organ. Like, it was totally a toy organ, you know, 50 bucks, which was a lot for us. You know, right. I'm the sixth of six kids, and Ooh. and it's just like, oh, here's this very special present. And, like, and I, would, I started composing. I was six years old, and I'm like, I had these very dark, very dark, thick songs. <laughs> I don't know. And, like, um... But I just know that I just felt it all the time. And it wasn't right. about, like, you know, um, how well, you know, all the different compositions and all these things. It's just, like, can I okay. express myself in this in this music, in this instrument? But I also, like, uh, I was always surrounded by just audio, you know, everything okay. um, from classical music, you know, Beethoven, Mozart, Bach. And, um, you know, then pop music and old right. rock music. Like, my brother was a really, one of my brothers was a really big fan of the Beatles, a really big fan of the Beatles. So, like, I grew mm. up with a lot of Beatles. Grew up with a lot of Led Zeppelin. Grew up with Prince. I grew up with Michael mm. Jackson. Like, you know, yeah. just all the things, just all the siblings who brought all the things because I'm the youngest. So, I'm, like, just listening <laughs> to whatever they had. Right. <laughs> and then, like, you know, but it, it always just felt so natural. So um, I think uh, it was when I was in Dominican Republic. Uh, so I grew up there. And um, when uh, a friend from the neighborhood, he wanted to come out and smooch my sister. So he would give me his keyboard so I would leave him alone. <laughs> and so I would spend time with the keyboard and I would, like, learn all the demo songs. So I would learn how to play the demo songs on the keyboard and just, like, by ear and playing with stuff like that. And that's when I really started to develop more of the technique and, and um, you know, ear and full interest. So that's I'm later on I, I took some piano lessons. And, um, and then eventually I went to college for music, composition. And just from there, just sort of kept going. You know, it's like one of those things It's not – a very linear story. Right. Like I didn't just go from one thing, you know, that right. strung me to the very next where I am now. But it was like, you know, um, in college I ran the production studios. Like I was the mm-hmm. first woman to run the um, recording studios at the school. And then um, from there I worked in post-production. So I'm still not, you know, composing children's music at that point, but I was in post-production. 
And right. then while I was there, I was running their studios, but then they're like, well, can you compose some music for commercials? I'm like, oh, let's do it. <laughs> and like, you know, just sort of, um, you know, just sort of taking in everything that I would run into. Just let me learn right. from this. And then there's like the odd jobs, right? Like there's like the stuff that one doesn't really want to be doing, data entry, right, right to help us there. But let me tell you, this is this stuff helped me with my music career because later on I needed to know how to run some of the software, and right. I'm like, oh, well, I know how to do that because of this, and so everything is totally related. So as as like indirect and the long long answer from your yeah. question, <laughs> it's just like all the things. It's just like everything from direct musicking to indirect musicking, supporting other artists supporting music studios whether it's as a booking agent or as mm -hmm. a you know a studio booker you know right. you do all these things and suddenly it's just like oh i'm here now That's and this feels so right i love i love making music for kids and families it is awesome i love that now why did you decide uh, that kind of a genre, children's music. I think children's music is probably the toughest genre out there. I really do. Mm. I listen to the you music. Know, it's, How did they come up with that concept? I mean, I, I, I it, 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 it's, it's just amazing. And I think, don't doesn't it take time? I don't know. You explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's great. Like, I love, um, so one of the things, like, I, I did, yeah, I did adult music before right. so like you know I did like alt alt rock I like to say my mm -hmm. angsty adult music you know all of like Fiona Apple kind of thing and I, right. and I still love Fiona Apple um but like I just remember there was this one one guy one time like he asked me he ran this bar in in New York City and he's like so what do you do and I like described my music and he's like way to sell it you know, can you sound more boring? And I'm like, <laughs> And I realized, like, when he said that, like, he was kind of being, like, funny. But at the same time, he was right. Like, I didn't feel as connected to that. And right. I'm like, what is my message? And, like, when um when I gave birth to Darius, to, to my son, I started doing um, a song a week. So I just I just got myself involved in this thing because I'm like, I want to keep making music. And if I, like, don't do this, then I think I'm just going to get lost in diapers and I'm going to forget all that I am and whatever dramatic thing we tell ourselves, right? And so it turned out it was the most beneficial and amazing thing I had ever done for myself. It was the biggest gift for me and the biggest gift for Darius, because wow. not only did I feel, you know, so useful and fulfilled to be making and creating sounds, just like making up melodies, making up words, and playing it. So my the commitment was I had to make a video of my new song every mm -hmm. week, which that's mm -hmm. like, you know, like <laughs> I got to show what I did. So like, uh, but Darius, also, as, like, I started when he was seven weeks old. So, like, in mm. the first video, you'd see him in my little, like, baby carrier, like, in right. front of me while I'm playing piano. So, like, um, he got to witness this process. Right. And in, that, in doing that, he was totally surrounded by music. Music. And, mm. like, I mean, and music, whether or not, you know, that's something – we do as a career or right. something that we just do as a hobby, it has so many qualities that make life better. It just, it will make us all just, there's this harmony and this safe place that you will always go to, right? It is your music. It is yours to keep. Einstein made music. He loved playing violin. And it's just like, that wasn't his career. That wasn't his thing. But that was right. his, his place. He really loved, like, there's some, some uh, he described that, uh, like, reading music and, and playing music was, like, math to him. You know, and he really mm -hmm. felt this, like, connection to it. But it, it was like, um, you know, 
I don't mean to make it sound like so studious, but he's just like, he felt this peace with it. And there's something about that. That's such a gift to always have in your pocket. And yeah. um, so that, that said, you know, after doing all those like songs a week, um, I had all these songs and um, I, you know, being I was a new mom, right. At the same time <laughs> doing all this stuff and like, I would play some ukulele to some of the other babies in the neighborhood. And, and the moms and the babies were just like loving it so much. And <laughs> And I'm like, all right, well, then maybe I should record these. My husband was just like, babe, you need to make a little album and just record these new songs, you know. And that's where Pockets Full of Joy came. And um, to say that that filled my pockets full of joy, like, that's not, like, that's an understatement. It was so right. And I just didn't look back after that. It was, like, it was the rightest thing I had ever done. I, I love that. Um I always tell people, especially specifically the people that I interview on my podcast, that, you know, music is our superpower. It's music has mm. mountains. It has the power to heal. You just don't know when you're mm. putting paper or typing on the screen. I'm still, I'm old school. I like pen to paper. Um, yeah. How, yeah, me how, too. Yeah. How what you're creating is going to, how it's going to affect somebody else's life. And I think it's just an amazing, it, music is just the one space, it doesn't matter where you're, you come from, everybody's just enjoying that moment together. They're having fun, yeah. they're laughing, they're venting, they're doing whatever, but they're, it's, it's like, it, it's, it's a community. And I, and I love to tell this one story about how this one lady I met uh, this past year, she had a show, and after the show, this man came up to her, and he was like, you know, I really enjoyed your performance. He said, you know, I was going to kill myself. (laughs) But after your performance, Mm. I have a will to live. So when you hear Mm. like that, wow, music is our superpower. So if people think that when they're creating music, they're not making a difference, they are making a difference in somebody else's life. You you may not see it, you may not know it, but you have a gift. (laughs) And you need Mm. to continue. I mean, children's music, I mean, you know, you play your songs for kids and all that stuff. You don't know what joy that is bringing to that specific child or the parent um, or to anybody that's listening to your music. So I say kudos to you for continuing to create great music. Because uh, what oh, I love about thank you, you, your children's music is very different. And I love the, diff- and I love jazz music. Jazz music is my uh, favorite uh, type of genre. Um that's the way, that's what I started with. Um, that's what I grew up with. And um, there's one, what particular what, there's a song I think you sang at one of the indie collabs that was just like mind blowing and moving. And I was just like, yep, that's mm-hmm. Lucy. That's Lucy. That's how she affects you. She wants you to cry. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. Happy tears. Happy tears. What I love about you also as an artist is that when somebody listens to your music, they see you, meaning that, you know, there's some people I want to be famous and they just sing any ordinary song. Like even when I'm listening to songs during the Grammy process, I need to see the artist in that their song. I don't want to listen to somebody, well, I just created this just to put it on the ballot. I want to see you, your soul, in yeah. your in your album. And you, you, you yeah, definitely needs to be genuine. Yes, needs to be genuine. Needs to be authentic. And I think um, that you have all of those, all of those things. I mean, just, wow. Oh, just, thank you so much. <clears throat> just not for nothing, but so do you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lucy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, now, first of all, I have to say congratulations on hitting number one on Sirius XM Kids Play Live charts back in May for Joy Spice Soul with Falu and oh, how do you say that? Future? Future? Future. 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 Yeah, future. Future. <laughs> future. Now, tell me how that collaboration came about and what Joy Spice Soul is about. Uh, I love, love, love that song so much. Um, 
And um, I'm, I was so happy when they started playing it on Sirius XM. And, of course, like, thrilled when it reached number one. Um, mm-hmm. It was, um, you know, during such a divisive time and really any time, I, I felt it was really important that people are reminded of mm-hmm. how we need different ingredients, all the diversity. I feel like people kind of throw that word around a little bit too too freely now. It's just like, listen, we need each other. We yeah. need all the different, you know, flavors, all the different spices, all the different ingredients. These are the things that make our life wonderful. Yeah. And even um, even when it feels a little challenging, like that challenge propels you to reach higher mm-hmm. and farther, you know? So, like, now this is not to say that you want someone, you know, you don't want someone around you who's who's physically who and, and emotionally, like, fully harming, right? There's there's no difference. I want to be very clear about, like, you're not a doormat, right? No, none of us are doormats. We need, mm-hmm. we need self-respect and, and caring. <laughs> so, like, distinguishing where that line is, right? But it's just, like, but we do help each other and challenge each other to think outside of the box and think outside of the, the norm and challenge in all these different ways. And that's really great. So, like, um, it was really important for me to, to have, like, so when I wrote this song, I, I literally had Falu and Fuge in my head. I, mm. I couldn't replace them with anyone else. I'm like, this is what I had. I had talked with them beforehand. I'm like, I have this idea, and, you know, it's not done yet, but will you sing? And, Mm. like, you know, they're like, I love it. One was totally game. One's like, let me hear it. (laughs) And I'm like, well, I'm not done yet. (laughs) So, like, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's just, like, I knew, like, you know, where you see – you you have the final vision of what it's gonna, right. what it's gonna sound like, what it's gonna feel, and like uh, I mean they delivered. They were so on top of it all, and like I absolutely love when like Fuchs comes in, I bring joy. You know, I'm like ooh, <laughs> <laughs> like, even even just thinking about it, I was like ooh, and like that was really fun. So I wanted to have you know there's me latina girl i wanted you know Falu, who's from india and uh Fuch, who's a black man with a fantastic voice he has an amazing amazing music i really highly recommend for all of you to like who are listening right now go check him out right. i think you're gonna hear so much more from him that i'm like so thrilled he's like out here doing music for kids and families um and like, uh, and everybody delivered it. So I was thrilled to see that that's like that became the hotness. It's on a bunch of Spotify playlists, and so I, I'm just so glad that it just keeps getting spread because that's like, I want I want that in people's top of mind. Like, listen, we need each other. Don't forget that. All right. Well, let me play it now. <laughs> I bring joy and a little bit of noise. The plan of the place when I bring to the table, bring to the table, bring to the table. Here's Falu. I bring joy and all things nice. It's what I bring to the table, bring to the table, bring to the table. Thank you. I bring so and it never gets so. It's what I bring to the table, bring to the table. Oh. 
Bring it, follow. I bring joy and a little bit of noise. I bring spice and all things nice. Ooh. I bring soul, 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 and it never gets old. Yeah. It's what we bring to the table, bring to the table, bring to the table. Make your hands and feet good. Hey, we all have a thing. Thank you. I, that was so much fun to listen listen back to. I don't listen to my own songs often. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, you're, unless I'm in a, in a setting like this, I'm like, oh, that came out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always tell people, if you can't listen to your song at least 100 times over, don't put it up. I listen to my songs all the time. Oh, like, man. Yeah, like, I mean, when it's time, like, you know, production and mixing, like, this is all you're hearing around me all the time. Like, I drive my family crazy. Like, all the details. Just like, Mom, that sounds exactly like the other one. I'm like, no, it doesn't. You hear that thing? You hear that? It's very different than than that other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, oh, it's awesome. I get it. What do you love most about being an artist? Ooh. Um. Ooh. Ah. Aha. So many things. Um, wow, that is a very that is a very thoughtful question. Um I think um I love the the expression. You know, like yeah. my goal when I make music, you know, I love composing and I, I love performing as well. Okay. But something about creating music is just like my goal is to stir emotion and yeah. to the listener. Right, like, and like, uh, in whatever form that takes, you know, and and like, you know, there every every song has an intention, and like has its methods and that thing, and it's just like I want you to feel it all the way to your core, you know, and just like, um, in in that last song, you know, there was it was a celebration. It's a celebration of like all of our amazing background and all the different sounds, right? Like, like uh, Salu is so unique. That is yeah. an incredibly unique sound. I cannot sing like Follow sings. You know, <laughs> she has her Indian classical training. It's just like, whoa. But, like, I knew that this was this ingredient here, right, the Follow here. And this is what, when I compose this song, it's just like mm-hmm. I knew that this would be a unique sound, that together this would create combination and this, this unusual sound that would really stir the heart and feel the celebration of this diversity, that amazing diversity that we have, you know? So like, that's the goal. That's what I love about being an artist and, and being a composer. That it's just like just stirring that the inside. That is my goal, Natalie. I want to stir your inside. It. How's that? I love it. Let's stir the insides. I love it. <laughs> now, it's, um, <laughs> it's Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, what is your background, and how do you like to celebrate? Um, I am Dominican and Puerto Rican. Um, so my mom is from Dominican Republic, and I got to live and you know grow up in DR. So while I was born, I was born in the United States. So I kind of have a reverse story, right? I was born in the States, and then mm-hmm. my mom took me to DR, and um, so I I went and went to school over there. And um, and then my dad is from Puerto Rico. I never went to Puerto Rico except for like a change of plane. <laughs> and I'm just like, I look at my dad like, Dad, 
You know, and it, and it turns out that a lot of my Puerto Rican um, side of the family, so I've gotten to know them a little bit more over the last, like, two years. I knew them when I was, like, really, really little, but I, I didn't remember enough. But so, like, now as an adult, I've gotten to, like, connect with, with more of my cousins, more of my uncles. Right. And it turns out, like, they're so very musical. And I'm like, whoa, mm. whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> So it's been like really great. So I hope um, one of my cousins, she lives in Kentucky. So I, I, I told her, I'm like, hey, so Puerto Rico, let's go together. Although they got so, oh my gosh, this this last hurricane again. Like, man, yeah, they've I been such that. such a target. Yeah. It's it's awful. They can't get a break. Man. No, I hear you. I read that and I'm like, really? Are you serious right now? I know. Now, segueing into Tell me what that's about. See, oh, yeah. So, like, that song, Um, speaking of, like, this, like, background right, and, and Hispanic Heritage Month, like, I, I wanted to include a lot of, like, my own background and, and stuff in this song. And, like, and particularly in the video, like, uh, so there's a, a really sweet music video, Homemade, you know, I did it with Darius in, in my old backyard back when I lived in Brooklyn. And, like, right. I had footage from families from Dominican Republic. So there was a school out there that I, I did some work with. And so a lot of the students there sent me videos. But also, like, my cousins, my Puerto Rican cousins. And then, like, there's a few scenes with, like, my two besties and, mm-hmm. like, and it was just all about, so juntos somos fuertes, together we're stronger. And it's just about that, like how, you know, we can do so much when we have that support of our community and yeah. how incredibly far we can get by doing that. You know, like, uh, you know, the example I gave earlier about, like, doing those songs songs a week, you know, of course, like, the support that I needed for that, right? Like, my husband was so on board. And, in fact, he, he's the one who's like, babe, you got to record you know, some of these songs, I think it'll be really great. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, <laughs> so like, uh, you know, it's having that incredible support. You, we can do so much and like just sort of be reminded of all the things we are and all the things we can do. So that's that. Juntos somos fuertes. Juntos somos fuertes, here we go. Juntos somos fuertes, juntos brillamos. Side by side, we can do anything. Together we're stronger, together we shine brighter. Alza el corazón a cantar. I can be me. Thank you. 
much fun, too much fun. Oh, my God. So can I tell you, like, I got so swept away, like, talking about, like, juntos, you know, the togetherness and all this. Right. And, like, like, literally, if you had seen my face, I would probably be that little emoji with the two hearts in the eyes, you know? Yeah. Like, that's me. Um, but... Also, I wanted to mention the sounds that we heard there. You re- you know that trumpeter, that trumpet player, that Sarita. Sarita, Sarita Thompson. Oh, uh, yeah. I- Isn't she magnificent? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> it was so wonderful. Like, I, I've been wanting to work with Sarita for a while, and I'm like, Sarita, I got this <laughs> idea. <laughs> right? It always starts like that. I got this idea. And she's so dedicated. Remember, like, this is also, like, coming out of the pen. Well, no, still pandemic time. So we're, like, um, you know, the the vax had just come out. It, it was still a sketchy time to be, like, going out and mingling. And, like, right. uh, so we had this plan and, like, how it was recorded. And I guided She recorded herself from home. I guided her through that. And it was just, like, it was just so amazing. It was so wonderful to work with her. And then on trombone, we got Ron Wilkins, which, again, going back on the pandemic thing. So Ron Wilkins is an incredible, incredible trombone player. And, like, I'm so humbled and so happy that he said yes to, to working with me on this song. Um, he was one of the first people affected by COVID at the beginning mm-hmm. of the pandemic. He actually got so sick, Natalie, he was, he had to be in, intubated. Mm-hmm. And like, um, yeah, it was super scary. He was in a coma for over a month. Whoa. And like, I mean, yeah, it was like, I was reading his story the whole time. Like, I didn't know him. I know he had played with Linus, you know, my clarinet player. And that's how I knew about him. And and so I kept following his story. And I just kept praying for him. And, like, you know, his his girlfriend would post, you know, updates. So, you know, he's still in this state and all this stuff. And finally, like, they were able to bring him to. He woke up. And not only, you know, oh, they had to do a tracheotomy, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, like, this is, like, serious. He was deep in it. Not only did he recover, obviously, he recovered. Mm-hmm. And a month after he was let go from the hospital, he started playing trombone again. I'm like, this man mm-hmm. is, like, a walking miracle. And it's just, like, in, in this song, you know, again, Juntos Somos Fuertes, he had so many people, like, praying for him, so many people, like, just supporting and championing him that I, I really believe, like, it's that power of prayer. And, like, him, he himself, like, he is a joyous, joyous man. Like, uh, it's contagious. So, like, it's one of those things where you're just like, wow, you were, you, you were taken care of. There was, there was an otherworldly force around you, and I'm so grateful for that. Wow. Now, yeah. you are were a Grammy Award winning producer, a Latina woman producer. You know, it's really it interesting. It's baffling still that there that more female producers are not recognized. Like I have my friend Justine Blazer. I had her podcast last year and um she was telling me how many years ago she went to a produce a producer convention or seminar or conference or something and she was the only female there. And mm-hmm. and then recently, I think there may have been two more. I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. It is. It is. Mind-blowing. It's like it, it is mind blowing, and especially like now. Um, yeah. you know, like there's definitely been many strides. You know, everybody's trying, but like, um, I, I know of a few. You know, there's like Ella Brick. She won mm-hmm. Latin Grammy for Producer of the Year like, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, and, like, there's also this Dominican uh, audio engineer and producer, Jean Montalvo. So they're, mm-hmm. they're out there. Yeah. You know, just a few, but it's, like, it, it's definitely outnumbered. Like, right now, um, when they did the Annenberg report, so this is, like, there's this whole uh, communications um, uh, university that do nothing but, like, they study – you know, statistics, 
I'm sure mm-hmm. they do more than that. Sorry, they do, <laughs> but they <laughs> they did um they did statistics on uh women in the music industry, and okay. it was a pretty staggering you know result. And so they came, <laughs> they saw that only two percent of producers on Billboard were women. Two percent. Mm. So, like, um, and and that's where, like, it's so alarming. You know, that's, like, that's really, really huge. Um, so that's where, uh, you know, at that, the same year I won a Grammy, uh, Emily Lazar won a Grammy for Mastering, which that was, like, whoa, that's never happened. And what was great about that is that she also recognized the importance of that happening, and she really wanted to – change, make a change, do something for a substantial change. And right. so she, we got on the phone. She, she told me about this amazing idea. And I'm like, after, you know, listening to her and trying to scoop my mouth off the floor, because I was just like, whoa, this is amazing. A um, few months later, that's where uh, they announced we are moving the needle. Um, yes. And they create. Their goal is to create quantifiable change and equity for women in the music recording industry. And, like, they're out there giving scholarships Mm -hmm. to women to go become amazing producers, engineers, um, you know, all the different parts of production. And um, also give them gear. You know, there's, like, you can apply to get gear so that they found out that, like, a lot of the, the kids who go to college to study production a lot of the boys would go more equipped. Like they had, um, you know, a lot of practice with gear at home. And it's just like, well, let's equip the ladies, you know, let's do this. And so they got a bunch of brands on board. And so they give equipment to women. (laughs) It's like incredible. And then, of course, there's also like mentorship. So not only do they send, you know, the, the youth out, these aspiring, you know, producers, out to college, you know, to, to study, but they also go with some mentorship. So like right now I'm, I'm uh, mentoring a young woman who's going to Blackbird Academy and she is doing amazing. And like, so, but I'm her soundboard. That's what they call it. Like where I'm like there, she calls me and texts me and we stay in touch. So she's not alone out in the world you know, right. out there. And it's been just so, so cool. And I see like real change happening from this. Like this is, it. you know, you're, you're kind of like a, it's like Whitney Houston. I believe the children are future, right? You're like training these youth to set us up. So like, just like you'll start seeing all this change, I believe in like another, just another few years. But like, you know, it's so incredible to see that happen. But I think, like, you know, part of our responsibility, um, you know, wasn't until I started becoming, like, I needed to be shaken a little bit. Like, I, I felt this when I was studying to become, you know, doing production, and everybody mm-hmm. was always like, you? You're the engineer? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was 19. <laughs> it's like, what's the big deal? Like, that was never a big deal to me until people started pointing it out. Right. You know, and that's so weird. Uh, like, to me, I'm just like, I'm a student who's learning just like everybody else here. Sure, I'm surrounded by a bunch of dudes. But again, like, I didn't <laughs> think about that until people started making, you know, pointing it out. And that right. was so, so strange. Um, but like, so I think, um, especially after doing all the ladies with Joni and like right. kind of thinking about, you know, when I brought musicians in for that, you know, just like, I'm like, wait a minute, you know, when I get recommendations for musicians, it's usually like a lot of guys. Why? Uh, and so that's when I started like, I'm like, well, do you have any ladies too that you can recommend? You know, it's not necessarily that like, you know, I don't have to be all about like, I will only da da da, but like, bring it, like, bring it on, you know. So, so it was really great to make that shift. Like, so I had to make a conscious, you know, effort myself where I started, mm-hmm. you know, pushing to ask 
for this and that and the other. And the next thing I know, I started getting more recommendations. And then I, I started telling people like, you know what, consider recommending, you know, when you, when you get recommendations, when you give recommendations, give half and half, like give some right, you know, right. women on the list too. And it's just like, it's again to them, it's just like, it, it wasn't like um, that they were doing it like out of spite or anything. It, it was just not, oh, you're right. Like I didn't even think of doing any kind of balance like that. I was just thinking about the people I've worked with lately, right? So right. it was just like, uh, it was really cool to see that transition. And like, this is not about, you know, making anyone feel guilty about what their yeah. choices have been and all that stuff. It's just like, nah, just like, think of it a little differently from here on out, you know, it's a new day. From here on out, you know, consider this, try this, try that. And that's totally okay. And then next thing you know, you'll start you start to feel a little bit more balanced. It's pretty cool. Mm, mm, mm. That's true. That is very true. Now, one last question I have for you is, um, what are the three things you wish you wish you had known before you got into the music industry? Mm. Well. Hmm. Would it be okay if the three things are the same thing? <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Why not? <laughs> trust your, trust your gut. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Like more than anything. Like so, one of the things I would do after every album. So after Pockets Full of Joy. After um, you know uh, what did I do after that big thing? So after like my my kids' albums. And uh, all the sounds, uh, what kind of world? Like I would always write like what I called my post mortem, right? Like um, okay. so, what I thought about the project, about the process, like if I should do something different, just sort of things, thoughts, like what was successful and what wasn't. And this is something I don't share the document with anyone. It's just notes for me. And the first mm-hmm. thing every single time was just like trust your gut. Here's why. When you said blah, 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 and you wanted to do this, imagine had you not done that. Like, trust your gut. Remember, you were being dissuaded from trying to do this, and you stuck with your gut. Trust your gut. And that was just sort of something, like, consistently just all throughout. Now, of course, there, there are, like, tons of other things, like, you know, keep going. That's something I do tell myself quite often, like, all right, Lucy, I know you're tired. <laughs> this is me, self. I know you're tired. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, um, uh, see, I guess I am going to say a third thing. Um, then also, like, always know your intention. Mm-hmm. Always. Always know your intention. Write it down. Come back to it. Because... Sometimes we get, you know, we kind of go off line a little bit, right? We get derailed a little bit. So, like, going back to that intention will always help guide the path and what steps and your decisions and all these things. Make sure your intention is very clear. What's your motivation? And so, there, ha, three. So, (laughs) so (laughs) set your intention and come back to it. And um, what did I say was number number two? I said, um, uh, keep going and keep going. trust your gut. Keep doing yeah. your thing. That's what it is. Keep doing your thing. <laughs> so, what? One is what next for you besides no possibility limit? What what's going on? Oh, we got a little. You got a little broken up there. Can you say that again? I know that you're doing Austin City Limit. What else is up next for you? Ooh, um, well, let's see. Miami is another thing. We're going out to Miami, and it's going to be warm over there. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, they have the Zoom Zoom Children's Fest on October 1st. So we'll be okay. doing that at Miami Dade or Auditorium. And what I'm excited about with these two shows, um, I don't usually take Darius to these, like, big uh, shows out of town during the school year. <laughs> <laughs> but in this particular case, 
I'm making a few exceptions uh, with some of the blessings from the teachers. <laughs> and um, because I, I really, yeah, I know, right? I'm like, well, so I'm going to take Darius out of school so that we can go play a show in Miami. And um, so we're we're very excited about doing that. He He's especially excited about doing Austin. You know, just like he knows the weight of Austin. He knows how many times, like, Austin was, like, canceled for us and, and how it's, like, really exciting to, to finally be there. Mm, mm, mm. Well, Lucy, thank you so much, so, so, so much for being on, chatting with Nat. Uh, I learned a lot. Some things I already knew. Um, you're fierce. I love your music. I mean, my gosh, it's it's entertaining um, and you, it's thought provoking and it's compassionate. It's all around loving. It's exciting. Um, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you're you're and you're an awesome person too. Whenever I see you, you're just you're full of joy. You're I, I've never really mm. I've never really ever seen you angry, nor do I want to. Although I've had little conversations. <laughs> 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 Oh, thank you. And thank you so much for having me today. This was so, so cool to dive into all of this. It's really neat to talk with you. Mm, I appreciate it. All right, everybody. That was two-time Grammy Award-winning artist, Lucy Palantara. You can find her on Twitty. Twitty. Did you hear what I said? Twitty. On Twitter. She's on there to Lucy, too. You know, I don't know. She's on Facebook as Lucy Calantari. Instagram as Lutoon. And if you don't remember that, um, you can just Google her. She's on all the streaming platforms. Yes, all. Just try to buy music. Streaming is, you know, we're not getting paid much on that. So, But you can still listen. Mm. You know, we'll still make that <laughs> half here, half penny there. Um, so, again, you got to listen to her music. She's all over the place. She's awesome. Oh, my God, you'll learn so much from Lucy. Uh, and listen, if you're an awe-inspiring woman and want uh, to be a producer, my gosh, just check out Lucy's music. You'll see the phenomena that is Lucy Calantari. Until next Aww. time, on Chatting with Nat. Thank you, Lucy. Oh, 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 oh. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. At Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, we know every business has different needs. That's why we bring you and your employees access to a network of over 1 million providers and more care options than ever. You also get a partner dedicated to transforming healthcare and doing what's best for the health of your people, your business, and your community with Care. Care First, it's not just our name, it's our promise. Learn more at carefirstforbusiness.com. Let's do it.